Okay, Bio30, so really quick video here to finish off our endocrine system hormones uh, with a review of what we would have talked about in Bio20 for insulin and glucagon. Uh, so this is just blood sugar regulation, really, and it's very important. Um, so insulin is produced by the beta cells of these cells inside the pancreas called the islet cells. And so uh, the insulin hormone is going to target the liver, the muscles, and all other cells in your body, and it's released after a meal. After you eat food, your blood sugar levels are high, right? Your digestive system has broken down the sugars. It's all readily available and present and floating around in your blood. High blood sugar levels aren't good. So we want to keep it in homeostasis, and so we release insulin to lower glucose levels in the blood. It does so by converting the glucose into glycogen in the liver and in the muscle cells. Glucagon is released when glucose is gone. And so when there's no glucose in the body and the blood levels, blood sugar levels are low, so for example, you fasted for a while, you haven't eaten all day, um, it's released. And it's made from the alpha cells of the islet cells of the pancreas. And it also targets the liver and the muscle and all other cells, just like insulin. But its function is the opposite of insulin. It's meant to raise glucose levels in the blood. It decreases cell permeability to glucose. So it stops cells from absorbing sugar because we want those sugars in the blood right now because glucose isn't in the blood. So glycogen then spits out its uh, or converts its sugar into a more active, metabolically useful form called glucose. And so glucagon and insulin are what we call antagonistic hormones. Glucagon is released when there is no glucose, you haven't eaten in a while, it pulls the sugar out of the storage areas, and insulin puts it back after you've eaten, and there's a lot of sugar in the blood. Um, so easy to remember these. Glucose is sugar. Glucagon is released when glucose is gone. I know it looks and sounds very similar to glycogen, but glycogen is the storage form of glucose. Um, so try not to mix those up. This is a really helpful diagram. If you've been taking about 20, you've probably seen this before. Uh, I usually show this in class or some version of this. But um, feel free to pause it here and just get a quick review of glucose and insulin glucagon relationships. Uh, the negative feedback loop. So I kind of mentioned this already. But if you have high blood sugar after a meal, the pancreas releases insulin, which targets all your liver and body cells, converts glucose into a storage form called glycogen. Once that's happened, blood sugar levels drop, so that sends a negative feedback signal to turn off insulin production. You don't want too much insulin made if you've already put your sugar away, because then you'll reduce blood sugar levels even more beyond normal, and that's not good. You don't want super low blood sugar. Insulin is just reducing blood sugar to a normal level. Um, and now if you haven't eaten in a while, the pancreas releases glucagon which is released when glucose is gone. Targets the same cells, converts glycogen back into glucose, which will then raise blood sugar levels. High blood sugar levels will then send a turnoff signal or a negative feedback signal to tell the pancreas, stop making glucagon because we have lots of blood sugar now. You don't need to pump more sugar into the body anymore. And then these two just work together, one by one. So diabetes mellitus, okay, not to be confused with diabetes insipidus, which is a different form of diabetes related to water retention. Not talking about that, we're talking about diabetes mellitus. Uh, it's genetic. Uh, it's due to not enough insulin production by those beta cells. Uh, and the result is you have a higher than normal blood sugar level after you eat, or hyperglycemia. Um, you can get sugar appearing in the urine where it normally shouldn't. Um, and you also pee a lot more than you need to because sugar uh, osmotically draws more water with it. And so you pee more than you should, which means you also get dehydrated more often. Um, so if you're tired, you're always thirsty, you pee a lot, you may have diabetes mellitus. Um, and because there's lots of sugar in the blood, little moves into cell, cells, you actually do get tired. You might think, oh, I have a lot of sugar in my blood, so diabetes will make me more energetic. No, no, no. Diabetes makes you more tired because it draws it out of the cells where it's needed and into the blood and then eventually out into your urine. So you can't actually utilize sugar properly when you have diabetes mellitus. Um, so there's two types. You can get early onset juvenile type 1 diabetes, where you take insulin injections to treat it, or you can get type 2 uh, adult diabetes. Um, this is very much so lifestyle-based, but also you can be predisposed genetically. Um, 
and this is due to a decrease in insulin production or a resistance to insulin. So you can treat this through some drugs, uh, insulin treatments, exercise, eat, weight loss, eating well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, okay, so that's the discussion on hormones for the endocrine system. The next video series is going to be about topics two and three, which are the nervous system and action potentials. All right, guys, thank you very much.